Do you trust government? Has our system not been based on lies? Has our democracy been undermined over the past number of decades? We had to look at in the past where we've had to rerun referendums to, to get the right result. In fact, outrageously, the leader of the opposition only a week or just more than a week ago said if the right result wasn't had on Friday, that they would rerun the referendums that we're going to vote on. This is outrageous. Um, and I suppose underlining the lack of democracy, the unfairness by which government foists these things upon the citizens of Ireland, was underlined a long time ago where, um, where the Supreme Court ruled in the McKenna judgment that spending of public money on referenda had to be non-partisan and in fact the government was found guilty on more than one occasion of spending public money to get a one-sided slant on the debate in referendums and if we thought we were free of that well Roderick O'Gorman reminded us at the very early stage of this recent campaign when he told the NGOs that if any of them refused to take what he called a progressive position that they would have to account for themselves. Now, NGOs in Ireland receive between them about six billion euros of our public money. And to have a statement from the minister towards those NGOs threatening basically that finance is an abuse of the McKenna principle in my view. And if that wasn't worse, we can see these posters all over the country at the moment um, calling for yes votes. Um, and who are the ones putting them up? But the political parties. And astonishingly, we the whole range of political parties are out there looking for yes, yes votes. Who is paying for these posters? But public money, for people who may not be conscious of it, be aware that the political parties in the Oireachtas between them get in excess of 20 million euros. That's 20 million euros of public money every year for their operations. So therefore, our public money is also being used for these yes, yes posters. How is that democracy? How is that encouraging a fair debate? Now, we're all entitled to take different positions in any, on any issue, but in a referendum. But surely, to arrive at that, we need to have level-headed debate. The debate, even on the... The motion putting this through the Oireachtas was cut short. It was what they called guillotined. So members couldn't quiz the wording, in particular the now infamous durable relationships wording. I ask, who wanted these votes? Where was the clamour from the, from the citizens of Ireland, who were the only ones that matter? Where was the demand for these votes? I haven't seen it. In fact, the ones who were asking for these votes are people who frequently, when asked, have said or refused to define what a woman is. There are people who talk about pregnant persons. They seem to shy away from the word woman. Is this the values that we're supposed to um, embrace these days? I'm asking, and I think it is, um, that what's happening on Friday is part of the globalist agenda. They want to break down fundamental values and the fundamental building blocks of our society to remove certainty which comes from the the bonds that exist in families that exist in communities they want to break all these things now there are two votes i'm advocating a vote no vote no and here's why the first referendum the one they call family, is basically a redefinition of what a family is beyond the traditional conception that consenting adults um, of whatever gender, that consenting adults would agree to enter marriage. They sign a contract, it's registered in law, it carries rights and obligations and duties on both parties to that. And they want to change this to say that actually it can include any durable relationship. Any durable relationship. So they're removing the conscious decision element of it. 
In other words, a court might decide, and this is it, we don't know what the meaning of it is, but a court could interpret such a change in the future and decide that you're part of a family, even though you never made that decision. Is that what we want? I have personally got durable relationships with many friends going back decades, people whom I've been through lots of trying circumstances and so on with. But do I regard them as family? Do I want another person or a court to say they were family? No, I don't. When and where does a durable relationship begin? Nobody knows. Is it when you've spent a week knowing a person? A year? Ten years? Is it when you've lived together? Is it because you're friends of a friend? It, it is just completely vague. But to, to extend the definition of family into being durable relationships has huge implications. It has implications for inheritance. It has an implications for um, all the rights that one as a family member might feel um, and duties and obligations that families hold towards each other. It has, and I don't like targeting migrants, but it has implications because the law favours families and talks about family unity and reunion. So are we now to say that anybody in a durable relationship is entitled to family reunion? That's what we're being led to believe. So there is no clarity in this family referendum, in the first one, and we cannot accept a vagueness as a substitute for what is the fundamental building block, the natural building block, not a mind bunrock na hairn. This is the nature to find fam human families as being the fundamental of our society. Now, this doesn't, in my view, discriminate against um, one parent families. There has already been, um, there has already been actually a Supreme Court ruling quite recently, wherein the the male, the father, in a non-marital relationship, was awarded a widower's pension after the mother of his own three children died. In other words, the Supreme Court recognised that family, which wasn't based on marriage, but it recognised it in law. Social welfare payments recognised family payments for single parents allowances. Could the provisions for single parents, single parent families be better? Yes, they could. But this, calling it a durable relationship, in no way goes towards that. We should relook at this issue and strengthen the rights and the duties and responsibilities of families in law. The second referendum is one that they cynically call, in my view it's very cynical, they call the care referendum because the first thing it does is it wants to delete the word woman and the word mother from the constitution entirely. Now I'm a man and um, there's no citizen in Ireland today that is not of woman born. We all have mothers and are we to not respect in, in any, recognise if you like, the special role that our mothers have played? You know, we all respect our parents, but it is undeniable the role played by mothers in, in particular in Irish life, but I'm, I'm sure it's worldwide, but let's concern ourselves with Ireland. In Irish society, you know, mothers have played a central caring role in families and continue to do in the vast, vast majority of cases. So why do we want to remove this recognition? And why is this being held up by the by the opposition, if you like, parties, and and saying that this is good for women on, on what is International Women's Day? We want to remove rights from women. This is what the government is doing. It's it's actually unreal. So this is the care referendum, don't forget, that they wanted to leave the mother and woman from Bunrot. Um now what does it do? Care caring be people carers or the cared for, perhaps people with disability, which could be very young, could be adults, could be senior citizens who want who need care. There are oh, 
hundreds of hundred thousand people or way more than that who are in that position in the state. So it's a very, very important thing. And I can tell you, carers, well, I needn't tell you, it, it should be well known. Carers are abused grossly in our state. Their labour is exploited massively in providing caring service to other family members, perhaps, or perhaps not even to family members, to outside the family. Um, carers are saving our state a massive, massive amount of money, which would otherwise have to be spent in taking these citizens who need care into public care. They're saving them massively. And what are they getting for that? They're getting a tiny carer's allowance, which is far below what the state defines as being the poverty threshold. The poverty threshold in Ireland, according to the state, is 291 odd euros. So the carer's allowance is below that. But the state has said, ah, oh, but if you're a carer, you can go and work 20 hours and supplement your income. So, really, carers are treated like slave labour, lowest of the low paid in our society. If we care about caring, could we not please pay the carers a decent wage? And, and by that, you know, one might think, like a recent survey, for example, valued um, labour in the home at about €55,000 a year. Well, Will the state go and pay the carers such an allowance for doing the vitally important and socially essential work that they do? I don't see it happening. I don't see it happening. But more than that, for caring, in 2018, our state ratified a very important treaty, the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disability, I think it's called, they ratified that and list out a whole comprehensive list of rights of people who suffer disability. But they didn't do one very important thing in that that, that international treaty carries with it what's called an optional protocol. The optional protocol would give people with disability the right to challenge the state or to complain to the, to the United Nations themselves if their rights were not being addressed. But our state, in adopting this UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disability, decided it would not sign this protocol. In other words, it says to people with disability, you have all these rights, but if you don't get them, there's not a thing, damn all, you can do about it. Nothing. Zilch. So, if we are to have a vote, and, and I do think this should be addressed in our constitution, if we are to have a vote on the rights of carers, then can we please ratify the optional protocol? Can we please get people with disabilities themselves to state what care should be and how it should be administered rather than tell them which is the practice? And, and caring and disability isn't simply to do with the carers. Housing, for example, the convention on the rights of persons with disability states people with disability are entitled to appropriate and adequate housing. Now I know in Cork County Council for example the vast majority 90% of people with disability who are accommodated are not in adequate accommodation. I mean there are very fundamental things that are not addressed so why then is the government pitching it that they want to call it that they're providing for the rights of people with disability, which they're not doing. But at the same time, this somehow is um, done in tandem with deleting the words woman and the words mother from the Constitution. So this is a complete fraud. The legislation was rushed, rushed through Leinster House, as I said, where the, the debate was guillotined. They're spending well over 20 million euros directly on hosting the referendum. Now to mind what the political parties are paying from the public money they receive from us to paint a biased and uh, a one-sided opinion in this debate. The Law Society of Ireland last week voted to recommend this. But there are many lawyer groups 
And there are many barristers who have come out and said no, vote no. Anyway, I think at this stage people may well have gotten their their information. I am afraid that a large number of people have just been utterly confused. And that's why the People's Paper has said we should address this and therefore I'm giving this talk. Can I ask you please, would you share the video and please follow us to help um, help us get a profile here on YouTube and beat the censors. Uh, Gulamil Mahogiv, vote no, no.